Good recipes are great examples of clear instructions. If you want to bake a cake and have it turn out well, all you have to do is stick to the recipe. But sometimes a recipe is hard to follow. For example, because it contains confusing side notes and isn't clear on which ingredients are needed. Such a recipe leads to an unsatisfying result. If, on the other hand, the recipe is organized and well-written, it's easy to achieve the expected outcome. In teaching, the same principle applies. Clear instructions for learning activities will get the results that are expected. Also, the students will find the activity engaging and relevant for their learning. But giving clear instructions is not as simple as it might seem. This scenario might seem familiar. Your lecturer puts you into groups. You shuffle your chairs around, turn to your colleagues, and somebody says, what are we supposed to do again? Cue that irritated feeling where you first have to discuss what the task is and therefore lose precious working time. If you are lucky, the lecturer left a slide up that explains the task and the steps you have to follow. This can happen in online breakout rooms too. But what makes online groups worse is that you can't lean over to other groups and ask them for the instructions. Nor can you take another look at the slide as in breakout groups. All you have is each other and any hastily scribbled notes detailing the task. Often, the reason why students don't participate in activities isn't about their motivation at all. It's much more likely that students are hesitant because they actually aren't entirely sure what is expected of them. And if there is a risk of losing face, they may be even more reluctant to speak up. There are five components to a good recipe. Let's look at them one at a time. One, state the purpose. Two, describe the desired product or outcome. Three, list the materials needed. Four, set the time frames. Five, provide step-by-step -step instructions. One, state the purpose. In life, we choose recipes to suit different needs. For example, a birthday cake needs very different ingredients than a barbecue. So explain why students are doing the activity. What's in it for them? Is the purpose to practice a specific skill or to solve a certain problem? Right, everyone. So the exercise I'm giving you today focuses on protein structure analysis and validation with X-ray crystallography. You will need to be able to identify the difference between different protein structures. And X-ray crystallography is the main technique for doing that. In fact, about 85% of all protein structure known to date have been documented using this very technique. The purpose of the activity should always be aligned to the overall course learning objectives. Usually, the learning activity will be an important step toward achieving the learning objectives. Two. Describe the desired outcome or product. A recipe will tell what the ultimate goal is. What are you baking? Is it a cake or a pie or a tray full of cupcakes? Most recipes provide a colorful photo demonstrating what the finished product will look like. Describe the final product of the learning activity. What exactly do you want students to produce and how will you collect it? Will they be creating a report they submit online? Perhaps a poster they hang up in the classroom? Maybe you want them to document a solution to a problem which they will show with screen sharing or on a slide. Be descriptive and specific, as this will not only give them a clear goal, but it will help remove potential anxiety about participating. So in the exercise, I want you to learn about X-ray crystallography techniques and write two different explanations. One that's aimed at your peers in this class and one that's aimed at a high school student. So this means you will need to adjust your descriptions for the different intended audiences. Three, list the materials needed. A recipe will list ingredients. 
Does the cake need one cup of flour or two? A whisk or a spatula? Do the same with instructions in your classroom. Pens and notebook? Maybe they need their textbooks and flip chart paper. Make sure you use the textbook, the Labru Protein Downstream Processing book that we've been using for this course, and it's available for download in our Moodle course. Yes, um, Shanine. Do we need to read the whole book? No, no, no. You just need to read pages 375. In fact, write this down. 375 to 388. That's the first 11 pages of chapter 25. Yes, Judith. Um, in which time frame do we have to do that? Four, set the time frames. Leaving a cake in the oven for too long can leave it dry and unappetizing. But if it is not in the oven long enough, it will be underdone. That is why recipes specify the time required to make and bake the cake. Think carefully about how long students will need for each step and the activity as a whole and include this information in your instructions. Please do this work by the next lesson. Um, so that's next week. But that's not all I want you to do. I'm, I've got some more detail. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see the exact instructions. And by the way, this is also in the Moodle course. So you don't have to write it down. You can go and download it from the page. Five, provide step-by-step -step instructions. Recipes explain step-by-step -step what to do in simple language and in the right order. Your instructions should walk students through one step at a time to reach the desired outcome. Adding an illustration or a quick demonstration can help make things clearer. And before people get going, check if they need clarification on any of the steps. You may also want to check the temperature during the activity. Are students making progress or do you need to make an adjustment? Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the instructions to sink in. Now, can you all see my screen? Okay. So as I mentioned, read the first 11 pages of chapter 25. That's pages 377 to 388. And while you're reading it, keep these questions in mind. How does X-ray crystallography work? What are its physical basics? Which mathematical tools are required to determine the structure of a protein? And can they be automated? If so, how? Remember, you're writing two different texts. The first one, about 2,500 characters explaining how X-ray crystallography determines protein structures. And this should be aimed at your peers in this class. Good instructions use active verbs like list, solve, or document words which clearly communicate the activity you would like the students to engage in. The choice of word can be crucial. For example, there is a big difference between saying list ideas or saying prioritize ideas. Listing implies collecting different ideas indiscriminately, but by asking students to prioritize the best ideas, they need to use their judgment and apply a set of principles or criteria that you define. Now, the purpose is clarified, the desired outcome described, the resources needed listed, the time frames defined, and the procedure outlined step by step. That is a lot for students to remember. Imagine if you had to memorize a recipe after only reading it once. You'd rather have the cookbook in front of you so you can continuously refer back to the instructions. Students are no different. Display the instructions for all to see. Write them on a slide, put them in your online course, or provide a handout. So, next time you are leading students through a learning activity, create a recipe for them to follow. Keep in mind that practice makes better. And the same is true for giving clear instructions. It is a skill that will improve over time with repetition.